Jake here. Welcome to Jake's Menagerie with MJ, special guest. We're going to go over the top five changes Triple H is going to be making with Vince getting done. Uh, do you know how much the Vince McMahon spent on WCW? I uh, know how much. About $4.2 million. That means that he spent almost allegedly... Well, no, not allegedly. Definitely. He spent at least three times that on NDAs. <laughs> <laughs> it was pretty uh, wild. That is crazy. I personally don't like how Vince treated talent. Allegedly. <laughs> allegedly. I think that a lot of the stuff that's been going on True. lately changes people's names all the time, like Riddle. True. People, characters like that are constantly getting weird downgrades. Or unless you're somebody like Braun Breaker, you're getting treated like the greatest champion in the world. <laughs> or Roman. So uh, that's me. I've been more of an AEW fan lately, although I have, do dabble still in WWE. I'm really interested in what they're going to be able to do differently now. Moving into the Triple H era and the Stephanie era. So yeah. Agreed. Don't forget though, name changes have always been part of wrestling. I mean... If you think about it, and I know Vince changed Stone Cold from Stunning Steve, but if you really even think about it, think about The Rock. I mean, he came in as Flex Carvana, then he became Rocky Maivia, paying homage to his family, and then became The Rock later on. So sometimes name cha name changes can help. I agree, like with Theory and Riddle, mm, not the biggest fan of it, um, but their careers are still young. Who knows what history will say in the end. Sure. I do, uh, obviously, Vince, if you're watching this right now, you never know. Thank you, Vince. He's got for, a lot of extra time on his hands. He does. <laughs> for all those years, I know you don't know what to do, so you're probably going to Google this and watch this, but Vince McMahon gave us a lot of years. I mean, there would be no WrestleMania without Vince. And if you really think about, um, you know, you could look at any sports brand. You could look at any brand out there. What is international in all the markets around the world? like WrestleMania is. Like, there are very, very few, very few that have an international appeal. In fact, Kevin Owens, who wrestled probably the biggest match of his career at WrestleMania 38 this year with Stunning Steve, uh, St Stunning Steve, Stone Cold Steve Austin, <laughs> and possibly his final match, many people don't know KO actually could not speak English. French was his language. He learned English by watching Monday Night Raw and watching what they were saying. Crazy. However crazy that is. So it's an international appeal. Yeah, it pulls a lot of people in from a lot of different areas. I agree with that. I, I think that there, there's no bigger company in the industry than the WWE. They've done it all. Vince definitely came, saw, and conquered it all. I appreciate the, all the moments he gave us over the years. And some of them I don't appreciate. The Undertaker was <laughs> in the industry. I'm not a fan of that. <laughs> Stuff like that I don't appreciate. But... I do appreciate overall everything that we've gotten. We've had a lot of great moments. So thank you for that, Vince. Now we're going to talk about the game taking over. I'll let you start since you're the guest. We're going from things that are like least interesting he thinks, that we think he's going to change to most. So what would be your number five? My number five. I don't know. I didn't number them in order. I just figured I was going to come up with them on the cuff. But <laughs> I, put um, on the spot, bro. I think the number five thing he's going to change um, is an open mind with the talent. So Triple H, it's funny because the changes in WWE have always happened over time. And the final call has always been Vince's. Now the final call is Triple H. He's obviously going to use his team to make certain calls. He's going to involve Brother Love. He's going to involve Paul Heyman. Obviously, he's going to involve Stephanie a little. We know that. <laughs> but he's already said he's going to involve the talent. Yep. And like all the decisions, a lot of people might not know, the streak was originally going to end at WrestleMania 27 to Triple H. And Triple H and The Undertaker were going to close the show, not John Cena and The Miz. And part of the reason was nobody wanted to go on after The Undertaker and Triple H. They knew it was going to be the show stealer match. Right. But the final call was made in the end to change it, move them earlier in the show, and use Snooki as a buffer and have The Undertaker win by those weird means. Which, hey, if you have to lose the streak, I just don't want him to lose it to Brock Lesnar. But hey, we all know I didn't have any say in that. But Vince did. 
Um, that was the one you were there for. That was what I was there for. Yeah, yeah, live. I mean, it was a moment. I'll tell you, the whole arena did not leave their feet that entire match. Like, you, were, everyone was standing looking at what was going on with Triple H and The Undertaker. That's like a 30-minute match. That's, wild. That's an intense feeling, like everyone was on the edge of their feet because those guys knew what they were doing in that ring. But Vince was always the one who made those calls. And not that Hunter isn't going to make some tough calls. Of course he is. But I think he's going to be more interactive. Yep. And I think that's going to... He's already said... On the Paul, he was on the Paul Logan show recently, and he actually made the comment. Um, Paul was asking him about having input, um, even though he's a WWE superstar. Vince McMahon's last signing, actually. <laughs> um, and Hunter's like, well, of course. And one of the other guys said, well, can I have input? I'm only a fan. And Hunter said... We want to listen to the fans. We want to listen to everyone because Vince was the greatest mind in the history of the business. So I'm not saying I'm going to fill his shoes. I'm saying we're going to make this work together. I want to know what everyone thinks about the brand and take it to another level. And that's that's thinking that probably hasn't been employed by most of the bookers ever. Yeah, I Truly. I think you're right. I think a lot of them are probably thinking like, yes, man, type. Correct. You do you're right, Vince. You do right. what I say. <laughs> Hulk says this. Eric says this. Vince says this. They just do what they're told. Yep. Where Vince Russo said this, and that's how it is. I don't want creative control. I'm the boss. Well, now I think Hunter is going to be like, hey, what do the fans want? What does the talent want? Let's put more creative control to the people. I think we'll find out if it was if Vince was right about it. he knew what we wanted compared <laughs> to if we know what we wanted. So it'll be interesting. It'll be good to find out. It right, will. Right. My number five, I think the tag team wrestling. Ooh. I think that they're going to bring back good tag teams. Because right now, when I look at WWE and think about their tag team division, it feels like the New Day, the Usos, and the Street Profits. There's a few other tag teams. Like, I don't even know what they go by, but the War Raiders or the Viking Raiders, Viking Experience, whatever they are. Speaking of the name changes, whoever they are. Depends on the week. <laughs> I think that they have missed a big opportunity with tag team wrestling because from what I've heard and read, Vince thinks that it's not something people are interested in. I don't even know why he has tag team titles if he doesn't think they are. But I love tag team wrestling. Going back to the Hart Foundation and the Legion of Doom and the Demolition. Then you get to the Dudleys and the Hardys and Edge and Christian. Uh, all the way up to the NXT stuff. You know, I liked the AOP, the FTR, American Alpha. Ascension was like, that was what they were called, right? Yeah. They were really cool. And then, like, as soon as they got brought up to the main roster, they were jobbing. You know, AOP was really good. They got brought up to the main roster, lost uh, Paul Ellering, which Ellering is a good manager. I get why they ditched him, because Ellering doesn't, didn't want to travel, and NXT was located just in Florida at the time. So I get that. But they needed a mouthpiece. They needed management to really move forward, and they needed to be booked like monsters, because that, that's what they were. And just so many tag teams, unless you're in the bloodline or you're in the right spot at the right time, most of them aren't treated well or they're looked at future, as future single stars. And so I'm really excited about, I think Triple H from all those NXT tag teams and moments really understands tag team wrestling because I've watched a lot of the NXT takeovers from back in the day. And I didn't even know who half those guys were when I started the program, but by the end of it, I was like, whoa, the AOP, when they get to the main roster, when the FTR gets to the main roster, those guys are going to be amazing. And then they got there, and they jobbed out to Triple H and the gang, no offense to Triple H, <laughs> <laughs> or every other Attitude Era guy. So I'm interested to see what they're going to do with the tag division. That's my not least favorite thing, but I am excited for it. My next was the women's division. Now, don't get me wrong. Vince has done a lot with the women's division lately. Um, obviously, we know he likes the ladies. Um, but maybe a little too much. Maybe a little too much. Um, but we, allegedly. Um, but we know that he likes the women's division. I mean, they made the Divas title into the women's titles, and he put the Bellas over big, and they just had the Bellas special, and they talked about how Vince had a vision for it. And, you know... Um, wanted to do the the, net, the television series, the Total Bellas, the Total Divas. So obviously, Vince did put a lot into the women's division, right? But he put it into the division, and I think you're going to see a little bit different of a way coming out of it, because we just had the first ever 
pay-per-view without Vince McMahon at the helm. Mm -hmm. And it came off of rave reviews. And one of the big rave reviews that came out of it was the women's faction that came out with Bailey. And then they're aligning Bianca and Becca. Then they're aligning Bianca with Alexa Bliss with, um, uh, I forgot who the third person they aligned with now, but, um, and thankfully, I'm a big Alexa Bliss fan, thankfully she left her doll in the back <laughs> um, because she's not carrying the doll to the ring with her for her match with the new faction. And to me, it just felt like I was watching like the NWO come out in 96, and maybe that's overselling it, but the NWO, and the WCW guys, like it's something new and innovative that is just kind of like, almost like he's gonna give creative control a little bit more, which goes back to what I was saying in my first point, but I think you're gonna see a lot of that in the women's division. And I'm really excited for that because I think Triple H has a mind for the business. Like he's a fan first. And he said that he, on the Logan Paul show he was on recently, he made the comment um, where he said that he would go 30 minutes early to the wrestling event and put his gear on. And he'd go there and he would watch every match. Because he didn't think of himself as the future of the company or just a WWE superstar. He thought of himself as a student of the game always. And he said there were some guys like that. Stone Cold Steve Austin's like that. But Triple H is a student of the game. And as such... I think you're going to see a whole new Divas revolution that'll take it to an e even bigger level, which I'm pretty excited about. Yeah, I think that you're right. I think they're going to do a lot of stuff with the women's yeah. wrestling. Um, if Eric Bischoff sees you commenting about the NWO <laughs> compared to that, he'll die. Oh, Eric's going to freak. I know, he's going to be That was his baby. Matt Jenks will uh, be on the same uh, level as CM Punk in his rants now. The world. <laughs> no, I agree. I think they did a good job at SummerSlam from what I saw. Um, I always wanted to see the four, four horsewomen versus the four horsewomen of, like, the UFC. And I know that they were kind of, shuffled, back in the day, they were shuffled around like that could happen. Do you think Sasha's going to come back now that Triple H is at the helm? I think she will. Yeah, I, I think, think she, she will. Too. Although I, I would like to see her versus Britt Baker over in AEW. I would too, but Triple H is, that's the thing. Triple H is a talent person. Yeah. And that's the other thing I was going to say is Triple H, it's so, I'm so excited to see how it works out because you got almost like opposite sides of the spectrum, no offense, Nick Khan, <laughs> but you have Nick Khan who's looking at budget cuts and cutting this and cutting that, but you have Triple H who's looking at, hey, the talent first. Like, him and Vince put together NXT, but then Vince let him drive the ship, kind of, mm -hmm. as a developmental territory. Um, because Triple H had said that him and Vince met, and they said that Vince created this big dynasty of WWE, took wrestling to a whole nother level. If you've been watching as I have since like the 80s, you know that. It's how WrestleMania was formed. He took out all the territories. Um, basically, he extinguished and conquered his competition. Right. But Triple H had said when him and Vince sat down and talked about it, um, after he probably talked Stephanie's year off for a long time first, that the idea was, um, you know, great, great conquering by Vince McMahon, but in 10 years, we're screwed. Right. <laughs> because you've got nowhere to go with the talent. And that's where the idea of NXT kind of came together. And when Triple H took the helm, like, no offense to the current NXT, but Triple H's NXT was run like a tight ship. Like, that was a beautiful thing to watch. He brought back things like War Games and Halloween Havoc and... But it wasn't WCW either. It was his own twist on everything. And that black and gold, to me, NXT is the black and gold. There were nights where sometimes, rarely, but sometimes, I was even watching that over AEW. I was watching that over Raw or SmackDown. Big when I was having my time and I had them recorded, NXT was what I wanted to see because of what Triple H put on it. Whether it was making the million dollar belt his focal point, or whether he had this football player named McAfee come in from the Colts who was kicking a guy. I'm like, what's the football player doing kicking Adam Cole? What's going on? And so there was something that got my interest. and But it was also that independent, grungy type feel at the same time, if you would, that just really kind of captured me. I agree with that. My number four is gimmick changes. The Walters. Change him back to who he was originally. You got, like, Butch. Get rid of the Judgment Day. Like, man, oh, man. I just want to see 
people be rebranded and maybe even have kind of going into your thing with talking about uh, people with creativity and stuff. Let people kind of come up with what flows right for them. Because a lot of the greatest wrestlers, a couple, well, not a couple, a lot have been made like Undertaker. Like if Vince hadn't thought of that, that would not never been a thing, which would have been very sad to think about. But a lot of the best wrestlers say that they needed to be not the second Hulk Hogan, but the first Ric Flair. You got to be who you're going to be. You can't be these gimmicky people that try to act like so-and-so or so-and-so and so-and-so. You got to be your own character. And I think a lot of the guys have that in them. But I think, you know, they were talking about changing Adam Cole before he switched to AEW to a manager. They didn't want his name to be the same as Michael Cole's because people would get confused. <laughs> that might be his dad out there on commentary. Uh, people like that, they have a great mind for the business, I think. And we're seeing that in other companies. And we're seeing that, you see some of the people like Butch, who they go out there and do their best job. They do what they're getting paid for because... At the end of the day, that's your job. You get told what to go do, and whether you like it or not, you go and do it, which you can respect. But I feel like people like Ricochet have been overlooked. He never got a name change, but he could be so much more if you let him go out there and maybe not be a superhero character, but just be the butt-kicking guy that he is, the guy that can fly around the ring and do crazy stuff. And NXT, he wasn't really, he was the, what, the something along the lines of, like, he can do amazing things. He's an awesome character. Yeah. But in WWE, they bring him in, and he's got to be a superhero. You had, like, Neville. They had to bring him in as, like, a Mighty Mouse superhero character. It's like, these guys have so much more depth to their character. I just think it'll be exciting to see what uh, Triple H allows them to do and what he also comes up with them for to do. And I think promos in that area are going to be a lot better, too, with maybe a little less... I'm sure there'll still be scripts, but I'm thinking there'll probably be a little looser on the scripts going forward. What do you think your number three is? It was tag team wrestling. Um, tag team wrestling, um, I see it hearkening back to the 80s. Hearkening back to the, the glory days of wrestling. Because I look at Triple H and he's a student of the game, and like you said, I look at what he did in NXT. Mm -hmm. um, and... I wasn't quite as excited about that, um, but I like the fact that he could bring that back. If he brings it back to like building teams like the Bulldogs, the Hearts, the Harlem Heat, the Demolition, the Legion of Doom, like that's going to get me pretty excited. Um, so that's what I had for that. So rather than give the mic right back over, I'll comment on your your idea of giving them creative control, and I like that because. If you think about it, you have big stars like Hulk Hogan and The Undertaker, who Vince might have brainstormed, but for every one of those, there's a Stone Cold Steve Austin Absolutely. or a Rock who he let take, even John Cena. He had let John Cena, John Cena was about to get fired. Right, a prototype. He was, he was <laughs> coming out in these weird colored little shorts every week, like a prototype wannabe, tag teaming with Don Marie, I think. And we watched him right here at Augusta. And he was about to get fired. And he was on SmackDown. And Stephanie was trying to fill airspace. And someone said, you know, I heard John can rap. Maybe because he used to rap in Boston. That wasn't a storyline he was put into. He really liked to do it. Mm -hmm. That was him. <laughs> so he went and made up a rap. I'm pretending to be villain. Vanilla Ice is more of a joke. And when he cut the rap, they liked it. Oh. Said, hey, you got talent. You can do this. There would be no John Cena. If they hadn't to let him be himself, Stone Cold Steve Austin was given creative control of the mic. Um, I mean, we all know the curtain call, which Triple H got in trouble for back in the day, but really kind of brought DX. I mean, they came out and they became what they are today. Well, that's who those guys were. The Rock, you know, he was Rocky Maivia, the grandson of the High Chief and Rocky Johnson's kid. And he was getting chanted, die, Rocky, die in the arenas. So he wanted to get a little bit edgier and tell people where to go. And Vince said, yes, everyone started singing along with The Rock. So that creative control on the mic. And I think Triple H is one of the guys who had it and knows that. Yep. So I think you're going to see him bring that back. And he'll give, maybe not everyone. Some people so. might need they, that. They need it, yeah. And sure. that's why they need managers. Which I think will come back as well. Didn't make my list. I'm probably more excited Didn't make about my list either, but I was thinking that. Probably more excited about that than tag teams, but I bet you'll see AEW is doing managers right. Yeah, they yeah. are. Arn Anderson, 
Holly Blanchard. They're doing tag um, team wrestling right too. Right? The, oh, they man. are, but they're doing managers even better. Like they have managers down there. Every science. stable has their own manager. And they're using old <laughs> wrestlers. Old wrestlers make the best managers. As you much as have I, a connection to them in their story. As much as I liked seeing Vince McMahon and Ric Flair in the ring this year in their seventies, <laughs> I far more I think liked seeing. Tully Blanchard and Arn Anderson managing all last year, and Jake the Snake Roberts, and guys mm-hmm. like that get out there and share their knowledge. And I think you'll see Triple H bring a lot of that back too, because it will play into my number two um, thing that, that I'm, I'm looking okay. forward to. All right, well, I'll go into my number three so we can get to that. Uh, my number three was titles mattering. Uh, titles, belts, championships, whatever they want to call them. Uh, right now, when I this is after... August 2nd, which was Monday Night Raw, which they already had kind of started, so it's a little bit of a cheat, but they did a big video package on Raw about the United States title, and they're already trying to, like, put some momentum into that championship, because right now you got Roman, who's got both the world titles, but he's not usually on your main shows, like, week by week, he's got a less, he's got a reduced schedule, good for him, wrestler of the year probably deserves it, he's been doing amazing things, but without your world title, you really need to be focusing on your U.S. title and your inter- Intercontinental and your Tag Team titles. I would love to see those unified as well in, in IC in the U.S., but they can make those like the star attraction, or at least the secondary attraction, of their three-hour and two-hour show. Right now, I think maybe the Walter character is running around with the IC title. I'm not honestly sure. I know Ricochet had it at some point. You're he correct. Asked me back when Nakamura was champion and Strowman was champion, like, who all the title holders were, I would have no idea unless I watched WrestleMania around that time and they happened to be holding or wrestling for that belt. I had no idea. They didn't put a lot of focus on it. I want to see big matches for the championships. I think Ciampa qualified for the number one contendership to the U.S. title, I believe. So you're going to see Ciampa versus Bobby Lashley, which is obviously, I would say, a Triple H idea. I mean, that's one of his boys from NXT. And I don't know if he's going to beat Lashley or even if he should. Oh, he definitely should. (laughs) I like Bobby. I think he deserves a good run with stuff. But I also think right now they're visualizing Theory as somebody who anybody can beat because he's got that money in the bank. So he can lose, 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 lose. But I hate that kind of idea. Like, yeah, he should lose from time to time. But he's also probably your future world champion based off the numbers. Gulp. (laughs) (laughs) Who knows? Maybe Vince will come back as his manager down the road. (laughs) <laughs> it could be a thing. Um, so that's my thing. I want to see those in all the titles across the board, but especially those two secondary titles. I want to see them in good matches. I want to see like the champions main eventing. It could be the tag team titles here and there, but those guys can main event your Raw and SmackDowns. Raw's got three hours. They got to do something. And I did hear with this that they had a lot of actual wrestling on Monday Night Raw. A lot of they did. Promos, which is exciting. And... Great point, and I will tell you, they actually did a promo video put together on the U.S. title and the history of it with, like, Sergeant Slaughter, I think I saw Jim Duggan, Ric Flair, um, guys who held the U.S. title. The legitimacy and the history of the United States Championship and how far back it goes, Mm -hmm. which was pretty cool, building up to their match. So, like, they and then they had people qualifying for that final match, and then the final match, Ciampa going to fight Lashley. So it makes sense. Like, they're already putting a little bit of rub on the U.S. title. Absolutely. And not that it needs it, because it is a prestigious championship, but they're building it to that level. They brought back Booker T to sit at ringside for the match. Like, they're all about, Triple H is all about bringing back the legends. And, of course, he plugs the show that they're doing on Sunday night, because they're packing Sunday nights with shows about legends, too, on A&E. So they're putting a little bit of rub on the titles. I agree with that. I think that the... uh... The thing is, it's so much more exciting, especially since they have the, the product anyways. They already yeah. have that three-hour show. Make it about them wrestling against each other to earn a shot at the belt. Don't yeah. just be like, hey, I want a shot at your title. Okay. Exactly. <laughs> could you imagine? Like, can I go on Raw and be like, I want a shot at your belt? I think I could go <laughs> out there and call out Roman Reigns. Maybe I'm Roman's next I'd challenge. I'd probably die. But <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? What's your, uh, moving on to your number two that you were going to segue? Number two, um, Hall of Fame. I think um, they have a WWE Hall of Fame, obviously. It's the night before WrestleMania. 
Usually it's my favorite night of the year for wrestling. Believe it or not, WrestleMania is my favorite holiday. Hall of Fame is my favorite night of the year. <laughs> um, but I think they're gonna have a physical Hall of Fame. Triple H and Stephanie have been doing a show where they've been collecting relics um, for years now for displays at WrestleMania. But I think with Triple H at the helm, he's a historian. He loves this business, student of the game. I think you're gonna see a real location of a WWE Hall of Fame probably in Connecticut or Florida, um, and I think you'll see that coming in the near future. That'd be pretty cool. They could do even like a Hall of Fame restaurant or something like that so people can actually go in and see this stuff. Oh, That'd yeah. Be pretty amazing. Imagine if they tied that in somehow with, I mean, I guess WrestleMania is always in different areas, but if they ever did one in Connecticut, then they could do it next door somehow. And that's where the legends will tie in too, by the way, I think. Because, like, I talked about the legends coming back as managers, but you can have the legends at the Hall of Fame if they're having a WrestleMania in Florida and the Hall of Fame's in Florida, they could do a day at the Hall of Fame and you could have some of those legends there because those legends are now all on the payroll. Yeah. So, <laughs> you know, it all goes hand in hand. Shockmaster can come back. <laughs> the Shockmaster can come back and manage Cody. I think Cody's his nephew, so he can manage little Cody, you know? That'd be Drop his Stormtrooper helmet, bedazzled. <laughs> I think Cody could rock that coming out of the Rumble or something. <laughs> yeah, the crowd would go, Cody could dress like whatever he wants or the crowd's going to go nuts because they know come WrestleMania, he's taking down Roman. Like, I hope, I hope they don't give it to Drew at the castle, but I want to see Cody win it at Mania, go take the Rumble and take down the head of the table. And I think that's what you're going to see happen. And I do not think Theory's going to win. I think he's going to try and cash in, and I think Roman's going to beat him. Hmm. There's not that many people who have failed. You got what? Sandow, Cena. Has anybody else failed to cash in the men's money in the bank? I think Baron Corbin did. Oh, yes. <laughs> so he could, Theory could join that list. But Theory's young. Theory's only like he in his young, like early 20s. So he's got plenty of time even if he does lose it. But. But that's okay, because, by the way, kudos to Baron Corbin. I'm not hating on you, Baron. <laughs> Baron Corbin came out, and true story, him and Pat McAfee are real-life friends. They were, they were on the same football team, the Colts. They were roommates. They hung out together. And the reason they bonded is because they both loved wrestling. That's cool. So, obviously, like us. Pat McAfee became the 12th man in WWE history to wrestle twice at WrestleMania. Um, kudos on his win over Theory. He was very athletic. And then he took a loss to Vince McMahon. Vince's only WrestleMania win at WrestleMania 38. Cheers for the boss. <laughs> but Pat McAfee wrestled Baron Corbin, and Baron put him over at SummerSlam, which is pretty cool. cool. I'm a mark. I will admit it. But that goes into, like, the title stuff. You beat your U.S. champion so that you lose the owner of the company. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Exactly. I mean... Well, you know, Vince, though, in his... He did win it after that, but the, it was like the next night that he won the U.S. title. And the owner of the, the company had wrestled at WrestleMania four times against Shane McMahon, Shawn Michaels, Hulk Hogan, and Bret Hart, not in that order, and he lost every single time. So he never had a win at WrestleMania, and it's his creation. So kind of makes right. sense that he has a win. Maybe he knew that... He was going out. We don't know. <laughs> he maybe had a gut. Allegedly. <laughs> a, a feeling in his gut or somewhere else. You never know. Um, but, you know, I, not only did he have his first win, but he also took the worst stunner in history. Linda McMahon, his wife, can thank him because no longer is her Stone Cold Stunner she took the worst. It didn't work. That was the worst Stone Cold Stunner ever taken. Uh, he was 76 years old, so I'll give him that. But it was the worst stunner ever taken. I thought he was falling down before it even hit. <laughs> It's a scary move to take. It's hard on the bag and the neck. All right, my number two was the uh, talent acquisitions. I think it kind of feeds in. We talked a little bit about, like, Sasha Banks. But there's so many people that jumped over to AEW and have gone to other places, partially due to COVID, partially due to, you know, creative, partially due to just budget cuts in general because they do that rounds every quarter. Um, but you have people like Regal. I can easily see William Regal coming back after his contract comes up and be. I think he'd either be management or um, somebody in the like a general manager type deal. Um, 
there's lots of wrestlers that could do that, former wrestlers. Even Jake the Snake would be somebody that would be like, whoa, to see him come in. There's so many great acquisitions from the management level. But then you got wrestlers. We got like Adam Cole. I always expected Brian Danielson to come back. Uh, I still don't think we're going to see CM Punk because I live out of line. I'd be shocked. But MJF, I don't know whether what's going on with him is a work or a shoot. But MJF could easily, especially with the ratings being changed back to TV 14 possibly in a little bit. MJF could come in and he would be, I'm sure he would take off, like a, put a rocket on that man because he's going to the moon. You know, he could take Cody's spot <laughs> pretty easily. So people like that, I think it would be exciting to see them actually get a real shot on the show. And I think people along those lines could really take off. And I can see them being interested now. Whereas before it was kind of scary going over there because Cody was the first one to bridge that gap. But not everybody coming over is going to get treated the same way Cody Rhodes did. I'm sure Cody was treated like a shrewd businessman because he probably came in knowing it was a big deal, him being the first acquisition, him being second generation. And he's kind of like a prodigal son. He left on those terms where he was never going to be champion. He was stardust, and they were treating him like gold dust, basically. And then he comes back, boom. He's beating Seth Rollins every night, making a huge entrance at Mania with his own theme music. And that's stuff that would never have happened on the old guard. I think you could see that happen a lot more. You could see people come in with their music from AEW. And that, I could see that being a real possibility and treated like a big time champion. I can see that too. In fact, you know, it's funny. I was just talking with a buddy of mine at work who's a big wrestling fan recently. We were talking about Pat McAfee because if you listen to his theme music, it's really catchy. And he's like, man, he's like, he's a big Colts fan. He says, so I love him at all. He says, but I wonder how he got that cool theme music. And I said, well, you know what? Pat McAfee, if you do your homework, has money. So much like Cody, I'd almost bet that he probably bought the rights to his theme music yeah. so that he has them. So that way, and that's like, Smart. that's a new guard. Like it's a new guard because that way you own your, your character. And it also makes you more marketable. Like WWE, they actually got really lucky because when they signed Pat McAfee, they were trying to sign somebody else. And I want to say, I think McAfee was almost like a second choice. But for the, what they wanted to be done. But as it turned out, he loves wrestling. Mm -hmm. And obviously, he put Vince over, right? Um, but the other thing is, he like genuinely gets excited about wrestling. Like, he'll jump up and dance on a table. He doesn't care what people think of him. He'll do a moonsault. He'll do whatever. He, doesn't, he just doesn't care. He's a mark. He's just cool <laughs> with it, yeah. And so, because of that, they got a catch. Because the other guy who they were trying to sign wouldn't have done that. I mean, no, no offense, maybe he would have, but I don't think he would have. Like, most of the guys you bring in who are celebrities don't want to do that go stuff. The motions. They want to go through the motions. Or like Triple H said, like, a celebrity comes in and wants to wrestle until they hit the mat the first time. They're like, oh, maybe I could do something else for you. Because <laughs> this isn't me. So, you know, you never know what you're going to get. Um, but I think that uh, I think we're in for some really good times under Triple H. My number one thing is actually uh, a more conservative kind of return of like the Attitude Era. And the reason I say that is look at SummerSlam. Have you ever seen a ring tipped over with a tractor? Well, not before now. Never before. Like, that was insane. If you had told me, I'd have said, that will not work. It's too dangerous. It's crazy. But they did it at SummerSlam. Yep. I think we're on the verge of seeing another Attitude Era type of run. And I think they don't need to make it as edgy with, um, with nudity and language. I think what they're going to do is they're going to make it more edgy with what you see. Triple H is a psychologist mm -hmm. when it comes to, like, the ring and wrestling. And that's what he, I heard him do a, a speech on movies. Mm -hmm. And if you think about it, like, think about Jaws for a minute, right? Think of how Jaws is. Jaws actually had all these bloody gory scenes stretched out where the shark would eat people. But we never saw them. Because the mechanical shark wasn't working when they filmed the movie. Put in your head. But now, we're afraid to go in the water, right? Right? Because of Jaws. How many decades later some people are. I might be one of them, right? <laughs> so when you really think about that, and you put all that in perspective, it's all psychology. And so it's all the road they take you down. And they get you engulfed in the story. 
and Triple H is good at getting people involved in the story. Think of some of the storylines he's been part of. You know he had a hand in a lot of those. Mm -hmm. I think you're going to see storylines that are built out that get us wrapped up in them, almost like a soap opera would, but with more of a wrestling twist on them. I think you're going to see a resurgence of the Attitude Era again. That's pretty awesome. That actually lines up perfectly with my number one, which is storyline, cohesion, good storytelling. Um, I don't think that, you know, like you said, I don't think the Attitude Era is ever coming back because let's face it, a lot of this stuff is not aged well and there's so many sponsors they would lose nowadays. Well, that and the other thing is not only changing with the times, but I think you'd find that Triple H and Stephanie, the Attitude Era was brilliant, but that's Vince's. Yeah. Hulkamania Era was brilliant, but it was Vince's. Triple H and Stephanie won their mark. Yeah, the New Age Era. I think that... The thing I'm looking forward to the most is that storyline cohesion across all the board. Seeing stuff that matters from a year ago, you know, stuff that they'll bring up, like with AEW, they make little subtle nods to things that you, if you're a long time watcher, you'll hear it and you'll be like, oh yeah, that did happen back in the first episode of Dynamite. Yep. Stuff like that. And they did, Triple H did a good job on NXT with that sort of stuff, with having the subtle nods to characters. You know, when Samoa Joe came back, he felt like a big deal because he was a guy who was there long ago. He had a story back in the day, and he was brought back as the same character. Of course, with Balor, they did it a little different, but still, it's the same person, and I think he's going to do a good job at carrying over those stories. I do think we're going to see attitude in the sense of you will get those promos where people are saying things a little bit edgy, Yeah, it's not going to be in the same way. It's going to be just... Less suffering suffetash or whatever it was that Roman said and more, I'm going to beat you down because he's the head of the table. He doesn't need to go into all that. Less cartoony, I guess, and that kind yeah. of stuff. And the builds to the, the wrestling matches are going to be that much better because the psychology going into them is going to be put together right. And they're going to have a lot of, I'm sure the creative ideas coming from the people, they're going to have ideas like, hey, why don't I do this? And they'll just add that little extra knot. I was just watching Sami Zayn. Uh, clip of him on the Stone Cold Steve Austin. Oh, Duncan's great episode. And how he added into one of his promos with, I think it was Neville who he was talking to, that he slapped him across the face yep. at the end of it. Stuff like that. When you have the people that getting excited, like Pat McAfee, people that are getting excited about the product, it's going to come across to us through the camera when we're watching it. And that's going to get us pumped up for the next thing that's going on. So, I think that is probably the number one thing to be excited for across all boards, but I don't know. I mean, what do you guys think? Like, comment down below. What are your top five? Are you excited for anything to change? Are you bored of the WWE product? Did you love the WWE product? Maybe you loved Vince's ideas. <laughs> Maybe you tuned into Raw every week and watched three hours, and you're like, this is the best content in the world. <laughs> I don't know. I wasn't that guy. <laughs> they chop it up on Hulu, and it's like only an hour and a half, and I still didn't want to go watch it. So I'm excited. I might even actually watch Raw this week to see what it was like. It was pretty good. I did watch. <laughs> it was epic. I, I, I am one of those guys who's watched it right along, but it was kind of boring for a long time. Yeah. Unless it was WrestleMania season. But Triple H is doing something. I can feel it. I can see it yeah, going on. Fun. I'm excited to see what happens. I agree. Well, you have anything else you want to say at the closing of the segment? Just like and comment below. <laughs> yes, please do. And subscribe, please. And subscribe. <laughs> Thanks for being on with me, Matty. Thank you. I'll, I'll be, be back, back again. again. Look Take forward to seeing you, you all. Everybody. Thank you all. Have a wonderful day.